Most of us get to choose how we live our lives. Almost no one gets to choose how they die. And the choice between being a victim or a hero is often the choice between life and death. She seems comfortable underwater, but comfort can lead to carelessness. With these rebreathers, we're gonna have yeah, a lot more- Yeah, it scrubs your carbon dioxide so you rebreathe your own air. And there's no sound or bubbles, so you can get really close to the marine life. And you stay warm because you're breathing warm air. You really know your rig. Yeah. Let's get you into this. Open O2 valve. Okay. Check till you want. Check bail out. Mm -hmm. Good. She handles the camera well, but does she have that blue sense, knowing something's there before you see it?
She has that blue sense. She has it all. What's in Florida? Manatees. I have to get footage for that endangered species series. How long will you be going? The rest of my vacation, if she can stay that long. She? My assistant. How does your assistant assist you? She does a little of this, it's a little of that, you know. No, I don't know. Is she well paid? Not really. She does it more for the experience. I just supply the equipment. What size bathing suit are you? Size six. Why? I have to get her a warm water wetsuit and she's built exactly like you. Is she athletic, brilliant, and gorgeous? Oh, yeah. In fact, I'll probably skip the wetsuit and get her one of those little thong bikini bottoms. <laughs> In your dreams, Jarhead. I am not wearing butt floss. No way. Babysitter, you want to work with me? You gotta dive like me. Be a professional. I am a professional, but I'm not in frickin' Force Recon. I'm in frickin' real estate. Dead center. How <laughs> predictable. You know, if I spent half my life in the Marine Corps and the other half as a cop, I could hit that target blindfolded. Really? How did you do that? Close your eyes. Now put your finger on your nose. That's how I put the bullets on the target. Your turn. All right, feet apart. Knees slightly bent. Take a deep breath. Slowly exhale while squeezing the trigger. But don't pull, let the shot. <laughs> You missed the target entirely, but that's all right. I don't think so. How did you do that? My daddy wanted a boy. I had to prove he got something better. You run pretty fast for a girl. So do you. <laughs> I just don't get the attraction. CHP officer. Oh, come on. You honestly don't see what's appealing about this guy. I didn't say he's unappealing. I'm just saying that police officers... Don't make enough money. Exactly. 
he's also kind of, you know, intense. You mean ballsy? Oh, Brucey, darling, you're ballsy too. I know I'm ballsy, but in a more refined way. <laughs> Let's introduce her to some of your country club buddies. They're boring. Well, if she only dates rich guys, she's bound to like one of them. Tract house. <laughs> Tract house? He's probably a drug dealer. Hi! Hey, come on in. We're grilling halibut. What would you guys like to drink? Thought it was BYOB. Tom, what a beautiful home. She's getting there. I say she has arrived, Tom. Hey, you have any scotch, Tom? You like single malt? Who doesn't? Come with me. Wine is fine with me. I do documentaries for the Saver Seas Foundation. And because I'm a Campbell, the boss sent me a case of scotch for my birthday. So help me out here. Cindy, what's this? Oh, that's a scrapbook I made of Tom. The J. Stander Baker Award? What's this? It's an award given once a year to the three most outstanding policemen in the world. Tom got it for starting the sober graduation program. What's this? Mr. America contest? <laughs> no. Those are my recon buddies. You a force recon? Yeah. That was Navy. That's where I learned to dive. Hey. The house Tom grew up in, the first house he bought, remodeled, sold, and then bought this one. And then this one. It's amazing. I was just saying to Bruce on the way over here, that Tom is a gem. Well-rounded, substantial. Cindy, he is just what you need in your life. The shoe? Mm-hmm. You guys are awesome. I got to work with some of you when I was over in Desert Storm, and while the rest of us were playing cards and shooting the bull, this recon team they pile into a CH-53 Echo. Headed for God knows where. Man, they look lean, mean, and ready for God knows what. job right nobody knows we were there oh tom that was incredible i've never seen anything like that neither have i whoa got it skipper how long did you get that cage in the water the cage yeah, I want to get in that cage. Testing one, two, check, check, check. Very nice, Tom. Very nice. Now, could you see me a few bars from La Traviata? Tom, I'm coming with you. Yeah? Yeah, I'm not going to miss the party. That's great. We'll give the surface transceiver a test drive. I tied off the bait line, Skipper. That witch doesn't sound too healthy. It always sounds that way. Roger that, Tom. Loud and clear. Go ahead. Tell the Skipper to let out a little more line. We're going up and down like a yo-yo. Roger that. Stand by. Hey, Skipper. Come on. Give him some more slack. They're bouncing up and down. I know. I know. I'm slacking it now. No, thank you, Cindy. I'm fine up here on deck. Wow. You don't know what you're missing. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, for your Wow. <laughs> Easy, baby. 
No, the reverse gear is working, it just pumps up out the way. Tom, look, we're trying to really yeah, but the cage is too heavy. What the hell happened down there? The shark took the plug into the cage air tank. There's nowhere left in that tank. Can't you hold us up? We're trying, Tom. We're trying harder. We're at 100 feet now. Listen up. The winch is not holding. I say again, the winch is not holding. You guys got to get out of there. Not an option, Bruce. Now we gotta get these sharks away from this boat. Ah! Where's your cable cutters? What? Your cable cutters! We gotta turn the bait loose! I don't have any damn cable cutters! Dangerous man, Tom Campbell. What? This romantic obsession you have with these great white killing machines. <laughs> Tell me the truth, Sonny. You were scared to death that day, weren't you? No, not really. I said the truth, not the party line for your boyfriend. That is the truth. I don't think that I'm supposed to die yet. Here we go. Oh, shut up. Tom thinks that I'm some new age wacko just because I had my aura read. I was told that I was put on this earth for a purpose. Every time that I've had my, my palm read or tea leaves, it's the same thing. I'm supposed to live a very long time. But you probably think that's wacko, too. Me? I went to Jesuit school. Water in the wine, virgin births, resurrections. What could seem more wacko than that? <laughs> but still, I can't help but thinking that there's a greater power out there that has a hand in things. And I was praying for you two today. Well, I just knew it wasn't my time. What about you, Tom? Did you just know that it wasn't your time? I don't buy that stuff. I've been on a lot of battlefields, and I made it off, and a lot of guys didn't. I don't believe that there's some greater power somewhere that said it was their time to go and not mine. And why'd you make it off? Because the bullet, the shrapnel, whatever, happened to hit them and not me. 
I fought besides guys that believed that their God would take care of them, and guys that didn't believe a damn thing. One died just like the other, just as indiscriminately, just as painfully, just as reluctantly. No life's mission saved Cindy. We got out of that cage alive because of her calm and my experience and rational thought. This is the box jellyfish. Pretty, but its tail can be deadly. This clownfish. And the beautiful Spanish dancer. This colorful fellow is called the nudibranch. And he has a cleaner shrimp feeding off of him. It's called the cleaner shrimp because that's what they do. You kids in the Mariner's Club, do you know what kind of fish this is? A turkey fish. <laughs> no, it looks like a turkey, but it's actually called a lionfish. I bet you all know what this creature is. Sure. No way. Tom's not going to live in the desert. Now, I, I know it's a great opportunity, but he's not going to let me go. <laughs> That job came through. Congratulations. They're even going to make me an assistant sales manager. Double congratulations. Can you imagine me living in the desert? They're giving me a model home to live in. Cool. Cool? That's all you can say? What do you want me to say, Cindy? What do you want to say? I want to say that. I hope you'll be very happy. That's it. That you hope I'll be happy. You're not even gonna miss me? Of course I'm gonna miss you. Damn it, Tom! What are you feeling? Lucky. Oh. I think that any time we have a connection with somebody in this life, whether it's for 10 years or 10 minutes, we're lucky. I don't get it. There are over times she's a natural in the water. Every year. And she's kind of living a desert? If that's what she wants, I'm fine with it. Slammers! Oh, what on earth is that? <laughs> Tequila Slammers, Janie, baby. Your old man and I sucked them on it when we were middies. Oh, yeah, Master Chief. Who sent you? Oh, I think you chalk enough for everybody. Well, how about the lucky bridegroom? Tom? No. Cindy? It's 10 o'clock in the morning. But it's party time in Paris, ma chérie. Bad luck not to toast the bride and groom. Hmm. 
Tom, Cindy, may your love last forever. And ever. Here, here. Bottle tops! And may you be everlasting. <laughs> <laughs> and Cindy, if it doesn't work out with Tom, you know where to find me. <laughs> Tom, I got something for you. A little wedding present. Bon appetit. <gasps> oh, bug season? Yep. Started yesterday. Oh, bugs, Tom. Yes. Better go get them before they're all gone. What are you guys talking about? Lobster, honey. Fresh lobster. OK, do whatever <laughs> you want. Unfortunately, I have a house showing. Oh, I love you guys. Mwah. Woo! Bruce, Rev, you guys in? Oh, I'm in. I am. Rev, happy hunting, everyone. So I'm going to get this little lady back before her daddy gets home. Thanks for the diet, Tom. <laughs> Thanks for the ceremony, Reverend. See you guys. Thanks. Mm, let's go, guys. Come on. Yo, Scotty. Are you okay, man? Yeah, bro. <laughs> I just gotta use the head, that's all. People talk about leaving home to go out to sea. For me, the sea is like going home. The best things in my life have happened on the ocean. Got up? They tried that. Forget it. Ready to go. I'm going to go in first. Cindy's been in there before, so she'll watch her back, Bruce. We going to run a line in there? No need. I've run lines in there a dozen times. No way to get lost. Ooh, take off your watch. The crystal gets scratched, taking bugs out of the rocks. Where? Let's do it.
How's everybody doing? That's great. That is just great. Ah, I have never seen so many bugs. How many we got? Oh, we got at least half a dozen. That sounds like a meal. Let's go eat. Daddy, are we there yet? I don't recognize this air pocket, do you, Tom? No. What the hell happened down there, Tom? I don't know. Prop yourselves up like this. We could have kicked silt up with our fins, but I've been there. Dozens of times, and that never happened before. Could have been an underwater tremor. 
There's a fault line that runs right through this island. You gonna be able to get us out of here, Tom? Yeah, Bruce. Yeah, I'll get us out of here. How much air in your tanks? We had 1,800 PSI. About 1,200. That's enough to get us out. But we have to remain calm. When you get excited, you use more air. We have to conserve our lights, too. If mine starts to dim, grab hold of each other and stop until we get yours going. Are you ready? Thank you. Okay? Yeah. Let's go.
happened? It's green, silly. Tom, what's the matter? I got a reverse squeeze. I got a sharp pain in my ear. I could see left from right up and down. Now you pushed your own, Tom. You got vertigo. Try to lean back against this rock. Close your eyes. And just try to take slow, deep breaths. You're gonna be okay, all right? Don't relax. There's no way all of us can make it out of here together. One of us will have to get the spare tanks from the boat and come back for the others. Tom, God, I feel like I'm running a marathon sucking through a straw. Bruce, I'm going. Sonny, with Vertigo, he'll never find his way out. Tom's the best chance we have. All the important papers are in the metal file. Stop it, I don't want to hear this. Shut up, is. damn it, shut up. Get out. I'm gonna fire three shots. And if you can hear them, you'll know I made it. If I see I'm not gonna make it, I'm coming back here to be with you. Wait, we have to we have to give him five minutes. Something's crawling on me. Well, what? Well, how should I know? It's pitch black in well, here. Well, what does it feel like? Like like a jellyfish? Like a spider. <laughs> like a spider? <laughs> there are no spiders in here. <laughs> well, too bad. We could follow him out. Turn on your light. You see this ledge here? Put your arm up and get as much of your body out of the water as you can. We have to fight hypothermia. It's the quickest killer. We're so bad about quick. You sure you want to waste that? It's not a waste. Tom has to have a way to find us. I know Tom's going to make it.
Rose? Uh huh. Where did you learn Spanish? España. <laughs> Are you Spanish? Cindy. My last name is Smith. But your mother's name could be Lopez. My mother and father moved to Spain when I was a kid. That's where I went to Jesuit school. Do you believe in God? Yeah. Why? Because you went to Jesuit school? No. Because not believing in God is like not believing in gravity. U.S. Coast Guard. U.S. Coast Guard. This is the Torito. Over. Coast Guard, Torito. Go on with your message. I have a real emergency situation here. My wife and friend are trapped in an underwater cave on Santa Cruz Island. Where on Santa Cruz Island? Just west of Painty Cave. I'm going to try to run a line back to them and get them out. But I'm severely... Severely injured. I have a broken eardrum and vertigo. Bring three tanks for us. What's your ETA? Five hours, sir. Five hours? I want you to get them out, not their bodies. We're on our way, sir. Go up in here. Rev, this is Tom. Listen, I... Just kidding. I'm not here now, so please leave the mess. Tom. I'll go get him. I'll get him out of there. Get drunk. I'm not drunk, Tom. I'm hungover, but I'm not drunk. You got a good heart, Scott. But you die in there.
Do you think Jane would remarry? No. She'd throw herself hysterically on my cremation fire. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I like it or not. Who's that? Tom getting married. But really, it's a compliment. When your husband gets married again, it means... It means that your marriage made him happy. He's gonna make it, you know. Okay, surface transceiver's good to go. Great, let's do it. I'll take this light. I'm gonna attach this reel to you. I'm gonna hand you the tank once you get in the water. Right on. How'd it happen? What? How'd they get stuck down there? Never mind all that. Now, what you need to know is that an anchor line is secured down there and it's gonna go right to the cave's entrance. To the entrance? Yes, now at the end of the anchor line is a tank. So the tank is at the end of the anchor line? Yes, now you need to grab a hold of that line and work yourself along the left side of the cave. The side of the cave? Yes, yes. You need to find a hole in the ceiling and work yourself up that passageway. I'm gonna talk you through it once you get there. Okay? You got it? Yeah, I got it. But walk me through it again slowly. Do I have to draw you? Okay, I'm gonna draw you a picture. You have the rock, the anchor line, the tank, and the passageway, okay? Yeah. You got it? Scott? I'm on it, Tom. Have you been praying? Yes. You're not gonna die. <laughs> yeah, someday. But not in this cave. How do you know that? Because you're with me. Scott, you read me? Loud and clear, Tom. Good. Now find the anchor line. All right. Tied to a rock. Okay. Now find the tank. Following the anchor line. And there's the tank. Tie off your reel. And float straight up. Straight up in the passageway. And once you get up there, I'm gonna talk you through it, okay? Tying the reel to the anchor line. Good going, Scott. Got it. Well done. Man, it's cold in here. That's good, Scott. That's good. That means you're getting close. I see a dark, narrow tunnel. How far do I go? Make your way up the passage, Scott. Are you sure I can fit through here? Scott, what do you see? Tom, I can hear you. You're breaking up. Scott. Scott, do you hear me? I'm stuck! Tell me what's going on. I'm stuck! I'm getting out of here! Stay put. Just calm down. There's no way through there. I'm coming out. Scott, do you hear me? Scott! Scott, you're hyperventilating. You've got to slow down. You have to take a moment and get your breathing back to normal. Okay. Okay. I just need a moment to rest. Uh. Okay. The leg muscles are burning from being in this position for so long. How about you? Oh. Uh, I just... <laughs> lift one leg at a time and just bend it and stretch it and shake it out one bit. I'm doing that. 
Nothing helps. What was that? What caused that surge? I have no idea. Could that have been a boat? Nah. Not even a largest aircraft carrier would cause a swell like that in here. Then it must be the rising tide. Good. Man, it's tight, man, so I'm all set to go now. That's good. Now just, just make your way up that passage. I'm moving right back in. Dark! There's dark in here! Scott, what's going on? Dark! No way! I'm out of here! Scott! Ah! The car now. What's going on? Scott, do you hear me? Scott? Damn it! Scott, talk to me. What's going on? Right there, Scott. You were right below them. No way. No way. A few more minutes and you would have had him, Scott. I find it down there. It's impossible. Scott, it is not impossible. There's sharks in that water. There are horde sharks. They can hurt you. I can't go back in that water. Yes, you can. I tried, but I can't. Bruce and Cindy have been in there for 11 hours now, Scott. With no air and hypothermia. I'm sorry, Tom. I'm so You can't leave Bruce and Cindy in there. I didn't leave them down there. You did. You took them there and you left them there. Don't you tell me it's my fault. You took them in there. You did not me. You did. so hot. I'm getting a headache. The rising tide. It's compressing the air in here. I see Tom. Where? In my head. Most of us get to choose how we live our lives. Almost no one gets to choose how they die. And the choice between being a victim or a hero is often the choice between life and death. Here it is. Most of it, anyway. What the hell am I supposed to do with this? Look, anchor line, air tank. Your line runs up into this chamber where you saw the sharks. Through this narrow tunnel, that's where you got stuck. In this chamber are several tunnels. We want to take this tunnel. Wait! This is a three-dimensional maze, Tom. That's not a cave. No way I'm going back in there. No, you're not. Just got to mark down where I am on this map. Anything that's not on this map, you put it in. You're not going to make it back up there. Tom, you're sick. You got a busted eardrum. Scott. This is insane. The Coast Guard will be here in a couple of hours. They train for this kind of stuff. Scott. Just give him the map. You sleepy? Mm -hmm. It's lucky here. Mm. I'm gonna get some air. No, you have to stay out of the water.
Where are you, Tom? I'm at the tank. I found your line. I'm going to follow it up. Tom, what's the matter? Where are you? I'm going down to look for the lobster bag. Are you all right? Come in, Tom, where are you? Jesus. Come in, Tom. Where are you? Found a lobster bag. Great. What are you doing? I'm gonna find my way out of here, son. I'll get you some help. But you'll never make it. You don't have enough air. I gotta try, Cindy. Suicide. Isn't that against your religion? It's suicide not to drive. Bruce, please don't leave me in here. So bad, I guess. Just sort of floating off to sleep. Here's the tunnel of the pocket. No, it's a dead end. Where are you, Tom? Come in, Tom. Tom, do you read me? Over. Where are you, Tom? Answer me, Tom. Fourteen, fifteen hours they've been in there now. No. There's no hurry. 
because you're not on a rescue mission anymore. It's recovery. Officer Campbell? That's him. Officer Campbell, Matt Van, KZTV. I bet you're happy to be alive right about now. I'm always happy to be alive. We understand that you were trapped in an underwater cave on Santa Cruz. Would you like to tell our viewers about it? No, not really. We hear that you left your wife in there. Is that why you don't want to talk to us? He didn't leave us? me in there. He got us all out. They say it was a miracle that you all got out alive. Do you think there was something miraculous about it? Sir, do you feel that some sort of divine intervention played a part here? Yeah, I do think they got it a hand in it. I do. Officer Campbell, and what about you? Did you feel the warm hand of God in that? Hey, you know who would be happy to tell you the whole story? That guy right over there. Hit a grandstand seat. Thanks. So uh, excuse me, sir. The... Yeah? I'm sorry for interrupting. No, no, you're not interrupting at all. I was just saying that diving's a risky business, and if you're gonna take risks, you have to accept the consequences. I mean, that cave was so tight, the claustrophobia was overwhelming. But I said to myself, Scott, sharks are no sharks. You gotta get in that water. I said to myself, Scott, it's do or die time, and you gotta suck it up and do the right thing.
Thank you.